We started this lesson with a look at the basic concepts surrounding annuities and their lifespan. Annuities have two phases in their lifespan. First is the accumulation phase, where the annuity owner sends premiums to the company and the funds in the account begin earning interest. Then there's the annuitization phase. This is when the annuitant begins receiving payments from the carrier based on the settlement options selected. These settlement options are discussed in the next section of the course. Annuities contain definite advantages to the taxpayer. We also looked at the differences between immediate and deferred annuities and tied in the premium paying methods that can be made for them. You saw there are provisions called bailout provisions. These penalize an account holder if they leave a policy before the carrier can recover their sales and administrative costs. If you recall the table, bailout penalties are heaviest during the early years of the policy and gradually reduce to zero within six to 10 years. Also remember that IRS early withdrawal penalties can be substantial. If an annuitant withdraws funds before age 59 and a half, the IRS will assess a 10% penalty tax in addition to any income taxes due based on the distribution. This portion ended with a look at non-forfeiture provisions which protect the insured against losing all the money put into the annuity in the event of a policy lapse due to non-payment of a premium. The last section of the lesson starts with the various settlement options available when an annuitant decides to begin receiving payments from the annuity. Study these areas diligently as they're basically the same for life insurance settlement options and both will be on the state exam. We'll then continue with an exploration of fixed versus variable annuities. There are substantial differences between the two and it is important for you to understand them. For example, if you'd like to sell fixed annuities, you simply need a life insurance license. On the other hand, if you're selling variable annuities too, you have also got to get a securities license through the SEC and the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. It's not just proper licensure needed for selling annuities. There are additional educational requirements that producers must complete prior to selling any type of annuity. Back in 2010, the NAIC adopted a series of regulations known as the Suitability and Annuity Transactions Model Act which has been legislated into law in all states. The Model Act has been revised and the suitability course will have this new material. This course must be completed as a continuing education course, which isn't available until your life insurance license in order for you to sell annuities. Since annuities receive favorable tax treatment from the IRS, it is important that you understand the differences between non-tax qualified and tax qualified annuities. An important part of the lesson deals with potential insurance company and IRS taxes and penalties. We'll break down variable, fixed, equity index, and market value annuities. These are more complicated than standard fixed annuities and you need to be well versed in these products and not only for the client's sake, but for your own sake as well. The Model Suitability Act requires that a producer take care of the client first, and all acts performed by the producer must be to protect the customer. Specialized annuities such as employer-sponsored annuity plans for employees are discussed as well. These annuities offer different tax advantages compared to non-qualified annuities and are only available through an employer. We'll also talk about a couple of annuities that aren't sold as commonly as a standard fixed annuity. Equity index and market value annuities tend to be fairly complicated products, and you really need to know the terms and conditions of these potentially difficult products. Finally, the lesson ends with a consideration of individual retirement accounts. Our last item to consider will be educational IRAs called Coverdale accounts. These can be great for those looking to save for their children's education.